Welcome to the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is. Good job getting a Spanish poster. I, I, yeah, I was Fuck, looking for different I'm just ones noticing tonight, that but... that's fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I am the Pope in question. My name is Reverend May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. It is episode 467 of the podcast. And today, today's episode is going to be a fun game where we see if I can finish the podcast before the edible that I took, which I now realize was way too huge, uh, turns me into a uh, babbling lunatic. So, we'll see that what happens. That always makes for a fun show. Yeah, 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 I guess. For everyone else. Meanwhile, I'm traveling through time. Uh, Bunny. Yes. How are you? You good? I, I am I am pretty good. I am pretty good. good. But I do have a, a very important question I feel I need to ask you. Um, okay. You... you have been tr transitioning for like how long now? Um, I have been trans. Well, I've been trans for over two years, but specifically this Monday will be week 76 on estrogen. Okay. So now in that time, have you yet learned? To do that thing where you have your shirt on, but you get in there and you undo your bra and shoot it out the armhole. Oh yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Let me tell you I, about I, I, why I, I became. I felt suddenly that that was a pretty vital question that that I needed to know. Thank you. Let me tell you about how I became trans. It's a really simple story. I was a conservative christian until one day when i was 14 i heard one share cd yeah. and suddenly i went i'm gay as fuck now i'm yeah. going to become a woman for the rest of my life that's how it works I, that's I, why i'm I, so happy that conservatives are boycotting the macy's thanksgiving day parade this year yes how because awesome if anything is that if anything, that's going to make people watch the Macy's Parade more. As it is, hardly any. I, I feel like it's not the most popular show in the world, but man, people are really going to be watching the Macy's Parade if conservatives are boycotting it. When, when have they really boycotted something where they did not wind up making it more popular? I don't know. I don't know. That's a great question, but I am super excited for conservatives to be boycotting the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade this year because I love the Macy's Parade. I mean, isn't I love Thanksgiving? Isn't this all just an extension of Silent Night, Deadly Night? Basically, you know, uh, let's get out there and protest and make this horrible movie a big fucking hit. Yeah. So uh, we will be talking about Eli Roth's Thanksgiving in just a bit, but Bonnie! Yes! It's time once again for our podcast to start, and what better way to start than by doing it in style with the podcast segment that is sweeping the nation, Jeff, Jeff. a.k.a. the Betty White Memorial Podcast segment brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Download today, or as the kids like calling it, T B W M P S B T Y B R S L D T, which is, you know, that's just the easier way to say it. Yeah. The easier way. Cat, cat, I need you to move. Okay? You're ruining my lighting. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move the cat. Sorry, cat. There you go. Okay. And let's start Jeff off. With something that we haven't done in quite a long time. Are we so I'm excited. Off? Huh? 
Are we Jeffing off? Yes. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna Jeff off first with a bit of Hope on film wrestling news. Okay. I feel like it's been a while since we've uh, looked into the behind the scenes world of professional wrestling. So I'm excited about that. And uh, this time around, it's a big time doozy. Once this happened, the first thing that I said was, I'm going to talk about this with Bunny on the podcast. So, um, Billy Corgan. Okay. The Smashing Pumpkins the dude? Yes, the lead singer of Smashing Pumpkins. First off, uh, wrestling fans know this, but if you don't know the ins and outs of professional wrestling, this might come as a shock. I try to say it to people as much as possible. Billy Corgan, the bald lead singer of Smashing Pumpkins, has been a wrestling promoter for about a decade now. Okay. He he owns... Really? He, he owns the legendary NWA uh, wrestling alliance. And he oftentimes is on camera as the, you know, the, the Vince McMahon, the, the evil, the boss. You know, it's, it's weird for people who don't know wrestling. But if you are talking to wrestling fans, they say Billy Corgan, yeah, NWA. But then you go to someone who doesn't know the ins and outs of professional wrestling, and they're like, wait, you mean to tell me the fucking guy from Smashing Pumpkins yeah. is a Vince McMahon? He's like a tiny Vince McMahon, because the NWA isn't that big. It's an indie wrestling promotion with a long history, but he's been working Billy Corgan on revitalizing NWA and okay, trying okay. to wait, make wait, wait, it... Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so I got a little confused because you said NWA, I heard NWO, and no and I NWA. Like and that's that's is is that really a thing that something can own? So what NWA is it another wrestling promotion? Dude, I, I'm uh, rusty. Is it the one that Paul Heyman came out of? No, he came out of ECW. ECW. N NWA wrestling. Uh, the National Wrestling Alliance was first started in 1948. Ooh. Basically, back in the day, this was like if you would, they had Luthez and Vern Gagne. This was like the big thing that uh, that's like started Ric Flair's career. Okay, was his time in the NWA. So it, it's a it's a wrestling organization with a long history, but nowadays it's just another indie wrestling promotion that just happens to be run by the lead singer of the Smashing Pumpkins. It's fucking weird. But recently, I, I, Billy well, Corgan. I, I don't has, know, man. You, you, uh, just being a wrestling fan, people would show up from time to time. So I don't find this. Any more surprising yeah. than David Arquette, Ozzy Osbourne, Cindy Lauper, uh, Muhammad Ali? I think once, I if I'm think. not mistaken, uh, and a few others who have, who have <laughs> shown up and have gotten involved in in bits and things like that. I mean, yeah. I'm sure this is a bit more on a grand scale owning a promotion. Yeah. Well, he, Billy Corgan, over the past few years, since about 2017, he's been trying to revitalize NWA and make it, you know, one of the big promotions in America. And so he was a, about uh, about two weeks ago, he was this close to announcing a big, big announcement. And it sort of leaked that, oh, it looks like the big announcement is going to be that NWA wrestling is going to get a show on the CW. And that was the big rumor. And it's like, oh, yes, it's all but been confirmed. NWA will be having a weekly show on the CW. This is going to be huge for them. So then they had a pay-per-view. NWA Wrestling had a pay-per-view. I believe it was called Sam Hain, but I'm, I'm not sure what the name of the pay-per-view is. I didn't bother looking it up. 
But in the pay-per-view, they had like this bad guy manager, and he's the head of this evil bad guy faction. And so they wanted to show that he was a bad guy. So it was Billy Corgan himself that said, okay, let's have this party. Let's have a bunch of women. Let's have him drinking. Let's have him do cocaine. And apparently that was enough for the CW to say, we have an announcement. We are getting into the wrestling business. And starting next year, CW is the home of NXT Wrestling. Okay. So basically, uh, Billy Corgan was this close to announcing a major deal. And then he had one of his bad guy wrestlers do cocaine on a pay-per-view. And so the CW said, fuck it. And they made a deal with NXT, which is uh, there's WWE SmackDown, there's WWE Raw, and then there's NXT. It's sort of the developmental brand. And so, yeah, CW said, fuck off Billy Corgan and went and made a deal with NXT Wrestling. But now it seems as if apparently the CW, they've canceled all of their shows. But, but I gotta their say, shows. I, I gotta say, like, like, geez, Billy Corgan, you're really out of fucking touch. The worst you could do was cocaine. Yeah. Yeah. You cocaine. Know, show him. Show him sniffing a bottle of adrenochrome. Okay, that'll do it. Have him. Have him do a drag show. Nice. That'll do it. That'll do it. Cocaine. Bunny. Nobody cares anymore. Bunny, I've yes. got a, I've got a, I've got an amazing story for you. Okay, it's a little bit of a skit. I've got an amazing story for you. Uh, so I will be portraying two different people: a TV executive, and then um, eighties, seventies, and eighties jazz. Musician Bob James. Okay? Okay. 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 So, here we go. It's an office. Yes, yes! Musician Bob James! Come into my office and have a seat. Excited to be talking to legendary jazz pianist and, and, and musician Bob James. We're a big fan of yours here at ABC, the American Broadcast Channel. ABC. We're big fans of yours, Bob James. Uh, thank you. Uh, may I ask, why have you invited me here to ABC headquarters? Well, we want to talk to you about writing a song for us. You see, we have a new sitcom premiering on our network, and it's going to be a huge one. It's going to be really popular. It's going to be one of the funniest comedy sitcoms ever created. And we're calling it Taxi. And it's going to be about these down-on-their-luck taxi drivers. And then there's like a stupid one. And then there's like a hippie one and a foreign one. Oh, it's going to be so funny. We have such a great team. You're going to love this newcomer. Young guy named Danny DeVito. Yes. You're going to love him. Oh, man. And then Andy Kaufman, he's going to be our Fonz. The person you that the kids want on their on their lunch boxes. Oh, and of course, America's sexiest man, Judd Hirsch. Yeah, going to be going to be a Danny, huge hit. Danny DeVito, so new that they got away with a joke from the first episode that they can never get away with again, and it was what? so fucking funny to me that, like, I don't remember jokes from an opening episode to a show I barely fucking watched. Yeah. But but he was Danny DeVito always sat up in that cage and yelled yeah. down at the cab drivers at least yeah. for for at least half of this first episode. And then he came out of the cage and got down on the floor with the rest of them. And it and it was a huge laugh at how short he fucking was. 
Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't do that now. Could nobody not do that now. Nobody knew he was short? Yeah, nobody knew Very Danny DeVito short? back then. Hmm? It's crazy. Nobody knew who he was back then. Yeah. Speaking of things you can never get away with now, in uh, uh, the late 80s, early 90s, legendary hip-hop group, a tribe called Quest, teamed up with uh, a group of young rappers called Leaders of the New School, and they got together and they decided to write a song together, and the song is called Scenario, and it's one of my favorite rap songs of all time. It's an incredible rap song, and I love it, and there's a line in there that back in the day, they would play on MTV unedited, and they'd play it on the radio unedited. They wouldn't bleep a thing. But one of the first lines in the song, um, one of the members of a tribe called Quest says the following, I'll bust a nut inside your eye to show you where I come from. Yeah. And that was not censored because why would you censor that? It's just a, a man singing about cracking open some sort of walnut and it getting it in your eye. There's no other thing that that could mean he because must be it's like from 1990. <laughs> yeah, it's 1990 and we don't know all the porn terms yet. So we're going to be we're not going to bleep this at all. And I find that fascinating. So anyway, uh, Bob James. Bob James. This is going to be this is going to be one of the funniest sitcoms of all time. One of the most successful sitcoms ever. It's going to be a laugh riot, and we want you to write us a theme song. Wow, me, Bob James, writing a theme song for a TV show? Oh man, I would love to do it, and I won't let you down if you're making the funniest sitcom of all time i'm going to write the funniest song of all time it's going to be hilarious it's going to be a laugh riot it's going to be oh bob dial it back a little bit we actually want you to do something different with with the theme song yeah. to taxi we want the theme song to taxi to be a little bit different okay well i'll make it it since this is going to be a laugh riot People are going to be laughing so much. I'll make it an energetic theme song. And it'll be super exciting. And it'll be thrilling. And it'll get people excited to watch. Ah, bop, 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 bop. Bob. Uh, back it up a little bit. You don't want to do that either. Yeah. Oh, you don't? Okay, then. Well, what type of a theme song would you like me to write for the funniest sitcom ever? I want you to write a jazz instrumental so fucking depressing that <laughs> God herself cries from the sins that are being committed by her own creation. And also call it Angela. <laughs> and there's no character named Angela in the show. Write this super depressing six minute song that'll make people want to slit their wrists. Come and see our hilarious new show, Taxi, featuring opening credits and theme songs from the same person who thought that Suicide is Painless will be a great song for the comedy mash. Uh-huh. Yay! You know, there's a lot of podcasts out there, but not a lot of podcasts tackle the important things like uh, the theme to taxi. Yeah. You know, we're covering the big issues here on the show. I, I, I okay. never understood go it's how so we sad. got from mash the movie to mash the TV show. Two I mean, totally I know they things. say mash the movie was a comedy I have never found a motherfucking thing funny about that movie. And in fact, it's mostly kind of boring. Yeah. And then you, I'm go, actually... into, then you go into the TV show, it, 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 especially in the first couple of seasons. 
it was just a screwball comedy. Yeah, I am working on a sitcom myself. Uh, you know the uh, the Val Kilmer movie Heat. Yeah, I've never seen it. Yeah, well, uh, I'm making it into a hilarious workplace sitcom. Oh. So I was going to do that with House of a Thousand Corpses. Nice, yeah. Make it solely about working at that convenience store. Yeah. Flash Museum. Yeah, I was was going to do... A, a sitcom, a, a hilarious sitcom based on House of a Thousand Corpses where in this house there were four elderly single women who okay. ate a lot of cheesecake. And they're constantly mentioning memes. Yeah. Yeah. It, that's going to be a huge hit. Uh... Bunny, there are two things that I know to be true. Number one, that Donald J. Trump is 100% guilty of all of the crimes he's been charged with, and he's been charged with a lot. And number two, that rich people always walk away scot fucking free. He is not going to jail at all. Oh, no. Period. It's upsetting, but it's true. Pretty sure he's just going to get OJ. You know? Yeah. Like, oh, we found him innocent, even though we all know he did it. But not guilty. And then that's it. They he's he's not gonna go to jail. Rich white people don't go to jail. No. Well well at least they don't go to real jail. Yes, they don't go to real jail. So I'm. Don't so, to- I don't care as long as he goes to any kind of jail. It it can have a golf course, you know, just to be able to say <laughs> that we put him in jail. You yeah. know, here's a it, friendly. It can have the tennis courts and all yeah. that. As rich here's, here's jail a- does. Yeah. Tommy here's, Chung. Here's a f- Tommy, you should you should talk to Chum, Tommy Chung about that because he Tommy went Chung, to rich yeah. people's jail and he freely admits it and says, "Yeah, it really wasn't. You know, I did my time. It wasn't bad." And also, Snoop Dogg has given up smoking marijuana, the devil's cabbage. Yes, and this is shocking to me. The way I explained it to somebody, uh, uh to my wife. Uh, a few days ago was this would be like Tommy Chong suddenly showing up on, you know, Good Morning America going, hey, how you doing? It's me, Tommy Chong, and I'm straight edge for life. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, Hey, well, have you ever read the Book of Mormon? I am yeah. hoping for, and it sounds like it's, uh, I'm also starting to hear hints about this now, but one of our, one of our Faithful fans from yes. the group had said that that one they had pop, heard that he poffies. might be uh, what one of our poffies one our That's one of name. our poffies yeah um yeah. said that he there's a rumor that he may be coming out with a line of edibles. Funny, I asked this to my wife, so that would be um, yeah. I asked this to my wife, and I'm going to ask it to you because I I find this to be a challenging question. Out of a hundred, what do you think the percentage is, the chance? What do you think the chance is that Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart have done? Literally, honestly, this isn't a podcast bit. This isn't me being funny. Legitimately, what do you think are the chances that they fuck? An easy 80. An easy 80? Okay. I was thinking 50. I, I was thinking be, 50 because they have no doubt. Like, into higher. Yeah? Okay. Because I think no doubt that they've partied before. They've had a little bit to drink, maybe a little bit to smoke. And, you know, shit happens. I, they have an incredible chemistry. I think they might have done it. And And I hope this is not racist for me to say. 
Oh, we're delving into some territory here. If I was Snoop Dogg, Martha Stewart is like the white woman. You know? Yeah. She is is like the, the... She was a Karen. She is a reformed Karen, but she was a totally a fucking Karen. I would have to tap that. Just for that reason alone, I would have to tap yeah. that. Yeah, it, that's like, that must be like you're a hunter and you see like a white elephant. Yeah. That's Martha Stewart. And I think there's a chance that they did it. I'd, I'd buy that for a dollar. Movies! Recently, Eli Movies. Roth's okay. film Thanksgiving was released in theaters and uh, uh, good on him. I mean, the film debuted this weekend with a $10.2 million take domestically and $2.4 million internationally, which means that the film uh, opened with a global debut of $12.6 million. It finished at the number three spot behind the Hunger Games and Trolls Band Together. It's not a huge box office win. It's not a massive box office win, and it's definitely open lower than some of the other top-grossing horror movies of the year. Five Nights at Freddy's, Scream VI, yeah. Mathrigan, The Nun II, Insidious the Red Door. I, I fucking hate the Blumhouse Conjuring franchise. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I, well, those. We've, just, we've talked about that. I hate the Warren. So yeah. I'm just like, oh, is that one of those? Yeah, I don't fucking care. Yeah. So um, it's it's not a huge box office win for him, but it is a really strong debut, and it's Eli Roth's best reviewed film. And I'm really surprised by that because when it comes to like film Twitter and like film geeks and movie buffs. It has become very popular to shit on Eli Roth. Yeah. Uh, And for good reason, but like, I'm excited that he's he's got a big of a hit here. I'm just a little bit worried because like, it's a successful movie and people are liking it. How many of y'all have seen fucking Grindhouse? Seen what? Grindhouse. Grindhouse. Yeah. Because Eli Roth's Thanksgiving is a serious high budget take on his fake low budget slasher trailer from the movie thanks from the movie Grindhouse. And I'm just saying I I'm, I'm worried that a lot of people are going to this movie not knowing about where this movie came from. I felt the same yeah. way when Machete came out. I, I, I felt, I, I, I'm, w- when I heard of it, when I heard of Thanksgiving coming out, I really felt like he just waited too long for that. Yeah. Nobody's going to get it. And from the bits I've seen of it, the clips and shit, yeah. you had to fucking recast it. Yeah. Because you, cause too much time had, had passed. You, you made it get the so same long ago and match them up. Whereas Machete, yeah. it was at least close enough where Robert Rodriguez can use the same scenes from the trailer, which I thought was fucking awesome. Yeah, he turned. He, he, he I felt like with the movie Machete, Robert Rodriguez turned it into a game where he just put a bunch of funny scenes for a fake movie trailer. But then when it was time to make the actual movie, he turned the trailer into his fucking Bible and said, I have to make these exact shots. Shot for shot, scene for scene, line for line. I need to make this movie look like the fake trailer. Yeah. Yeah. So, in other news, Michael Rappaport is a piece of shit. Oh, oh, okay. Wait, hold on one moment. I do need to remind you that I have seen Joaquin Phoenix's penis, and I'm still afraid. 
Okay. Okay, that's that's oh. that is a frightening thing to just randomly drop in the middle of a Jeff, but we're gonna continue. Uh, Michael Rappaport, actor and professional black afraid. man impersonator, Michael Rappaport. Yes. Noted leftist New Yorker and wannabe black person, Michael Rappaport. Um, he may have, he may have lost it. Uh, we may have lost him. Yeah. Because, uh, the dude has a podcast like every white male. And a few days ago on the newest episode of his podcast, he rallied against Hamas. Yeah. And it's like, what? You're against terrorists? Wow. Strong take. Yeah. And he said that unless Joe Biden addresses the rise of anti-Semitism in the United States, quote, voting Trump in 2024 is on the table. Wow. That's fucking so, insane and stupid. How did that come out of him? Yeah, I, I, I yeah, heard I don't this. Know. I, 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 I've heard this. I've seen this. Like, yeah. How the fuck does this come out? You know who Trump is. Yeah. We all know who Trump is. If we're this going is some to, bullshit is what this is. If we're going to if we're going to be talking about anti Semitism, like all of this is coming from him. It, 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 it's just Jews turn again. Whoever gets the headlines yeah. gets the hate. And yeah. they're the ones who get attacked. So you know, takes the pressure off of the Asians. Hmm. You know, and the trans people, and and the trans people. Although I think I think you're you're on a whole different level. Um, it would never be a good time not to hate a trans person. I'm a trans Hispanic woman too. <laughs> that's even that's even worse. Yeah. I'm a target of a target of. A, I'm a minority of a minority. Yeah, you know. You have Ridiculous. you have George Floyd. Well, time to step up to the plate, black people. You know, so well. So I remember. Remember, we they were finding all those black people lynched that we don't talk about yeah. anymore. You know, mm, they must. COVID? They must have. Oh, it comes from China. Them. Let's beat up Asian people. Yep. So now, a country. Is having a problem with another country. So now it's time to beat up Jews. Yeah. I mean, I mean, this is the hate that we formatted in the country across the fucking board. Okay. And it, I'm gets, having a... it gets highlighted according to the headlines. Yeah. I have a real hard time uh, with what's going on in the Middle East right now. As far as I can tell, um, the Palestinians were getting upset, so the terrorist organization Hamas bombed Israel, which is bad, because bombing people is bad. But then Israel's turning around saying, okay, we're going to punish and start killing all of the Palestinians. That's also bad. Right. But it's difficult not to say, hey, um, what Hamas did is bad without a massive group of people saying, hey, uh, you're being racist. But then also, you can't say, hey, Israel may be punishing an entire nation for the acts of a few rebels is bad. Like, you can't say that either. We're gonna because pick up then the pace, man. we got three minutes to put this mess to bed. <laughs> yes, yes, Q. Yes, yes, the Geneva Convention. Yeah, they are. They are literally committing war crimes 
attacking Palestine yeah. as a whole and bombing and targeting civilian okay. areas, hospitals, churches, you know, and, and making up bullshit. But the thing is, is like, fucking, I know the word anti Semitism is getting tossed around. First off, if being anti genocide makes me anti Semitic, you know what? I'll take that. Fine. If that's what that means, I'll take it. Okay? But here's we're the not thing. Talking about, here's... We're talking about the same shit that we're always talking about. Being against an authoritarian right-wing fucking government who does horrible things. Because that's yeah. what we have. Fucking 78% of Israelis are against the Netanyahu government. Yeah. Okay? How, how many Jewish organizations have we heard say, yeah, no, dudes, this is not fucking cool? Yeah. So but, like, you can't say that. You call it You're not allowed to say that. No. That's here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing about the Geneva Convention, okay? Um, just, that's a bad con. Just go to, like, Comic-Con. Instead, yeah. that's yeah. a better convention than the Geneva Convention. Yeah. You know. But oddly, you can still get a hand job from a furry. Nice. Nice. That's exciting. So anyway, uh, less than a minute. We are going to be taking a short break. When we come back, we will be discussing this week's movie, uh, El Enigma... De la Utro Espacio. I don't remember what it was called in Spanish. <laughs> uh, the Thing from Another World. And it's going to be a whole bunch of fun. But maybe we should take a break. Should we take a break, Bunny? We should take a break. Okay. We will be right back with more of the Popon film after this. Doo -doo. Oh! 